Marvel Studios' marketing for the Ant-Man movie is really fascinating to me because it appears that they're using some pretty interesting psychology to try and get us on board with the film. Or I'm reading too much into things and people are just watching it because it's got the Marvel name attached to it. Or both, actually. I don't really know. Here's a bumper. <laughs> Welcome to a tie-in video, I'm Scott, and I was definitely on board with the Ant-Man movie until Edgar Wright dropped out. As the director of one of my favorite movies of all time, Scott Pilgrim, I was excited to see what he'd do with another comic book character named Scott, which, as we all know, is the greatest name on the planet. But you know what's kind of a weird name? Ant-Man. It sounds kind of odd, right? Marvel even made it a point in the trailers to showcase that even the characters in the Marvel Universe themselves think it's a weird name. Scott Lang repeatedly makes remarks about how the name wasn't his idea, or even wonders if it's too late to change it. This is a trick that writers often use called lampshade hanging. Whenever there is something that threatens the audience's suspension of disbelief, writers can call attention to it in the story itself. So when Scott makes references to how the name Ant-Man sounds dumb, it's actually strategic. It shows that the world of the Marvel Universe is like ours. What sounds weird to you and me also sounds weird to Scott Lang. And he's not going to pretend it doesn't just because he's in a movie. Or, hey, maybe the name doesn't sound lame to you, at least at this point in time. When the Ant-Man movie was first announced and started gaining a little bit of steam, it probably sounded really strange to a lot of people. I ran into my fair share of folks saying that the idea of a superhero named Ant-Man sounds kind of dumb. But with Marvel's marketing in full swing, maybe that doesn't sound so dumb after all. There's this idea in psychology called the mere exposure effect. And just to give an incredibly brief overview of what that is, it's a phenomenon in which people tend to prefer things that they are familiar with. It's been demonstrated with all sorts of things, including words. Words like Ant-Man. The theory behind this, put simply, is that repeated exposure to something makes that thing easier for our brain to process and we like that. So maybe Ant-Man sounded funny at first, but now that we've been hearing about it for years, especially these last few months, it has become less funny and maybe even cool sounding. I think this can apply to just about any comic book character name, honestly. When you think about some of the more popular superheroes out there, you can see just how lazy or lame their names really are. Superman, Batman, Iron Man, Captain America, sure, those names carry weight now and sound really cool, but only because we're familiar with them. Think of how silly those names might sound to people who have never heard of these characters before. Marvel is aware that Ant-Man doesn't sound super exciting to people, so they're using strategies like lampshade hanging and the mere exposure effect to break through our initial impressions and have us give the movie a chance. Or they're just doing whatever they want because they're Marvel and they know that they'll take my money regardless. What do you guys think? Has Marvel been strategically trying to get us to watch Ant-Man through the use of psychological marketing techniques? What other superhero names sound weird to you? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. And yes, at this point, I've gotten over the whole Edgar Wright thing, and I'm actually excited to see this movie again. But again, no, no spoilers in the comments, please. This video was a tie-in to one I made earlier this week about that infamous panel in Ant-Man uh, history when Hank Pym hits Wasp. If you're interested in learning about the real-world story of how that came to be, I'll put a link in the description that you can check out uh, if you want to. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, we make new videos every week because we believe that asking questions and examining comics beyond the surface can actually enhance your comic book reading experience and make comic books just a little bit more awesome. So make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, I'm Scott. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, and we will see you on Monday for another episode of the NerdSync podcast available on iTunes and SoundCloud. See ya.